Hello, and we're going to talk about making change. Now, I know you live in a world where most of the time when you have to pay for something, you just give them a credit card. Well, you might, but your parents just give them a credit card, or they flash their phone, or they Venmo someone. But back in the day, people would have to use cash, and there are still times when you have to use cash. So it's good to know uh, how to make change and how much change you should receive so that you don't lose out on money. Right? Making change means if you go to the store and you see an item, maybe a piece of candy, that's 78 cents. Right? You're like, I don't have the right coins to make 78 cents, but I do have a dollar. Right? You're going to pay the, the store clerk the dollar, but you've overpaid. You've paid more than it's worth. You're going to want some money back. In fact, this is a classic situation where you paid a dollar, but it was only worth 78 cents. So, to fill the gap, you need to... That's right, you need to subtract. So, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, the subtraction problem because it can look a little weird. You've got 78 cents, you've got one dollar. How does that all work? Well, we want to remember that a dollar is written like this. 1.00. Because that what that means is one dollar and no cents. Whoops. The decimal separates the dollars from the cents, from the coins. Now, 78 cents at this point does not have a decimal. Remember, 78 cents isn't quite a dollar. It's still less than a dollar. So we put that decimal before the number 78. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the cent sign. So it's almost like 78 cents is zero dollars and 78 cents. And one dollar is one dollar and no cents. Or you could even think of it like 100 pennies because a dollar is equal to 100 pennies. So now that I have this all nice and lined up, my decimals match up, my ones, my tens, my hundreds, now I can subtract. Ooh, this looks like it might be a possibility for the box trick. Let's look. I do need to regroup, bigger, bottom, better, borrow. There is a zero in the middle. We can just box right over that decimal. It's almost like we don't have to worry it's there right now. The 10 becomes a... 9, this 10, or this 0 becomes a 10, squeeze that in there, 10 minus 8, 9 minus 7, don't forget the decimal, if you want to put the 0 there, you can, 22 cents, and you can always check by adding the 22 cents plus the 78 cents, and that should give you a dollar. All right, let's look at another one. You go into the store and you see that something you want is a dollar twenty-five. One dollar and twenty-five cents. One dollar separated from the twenty-five cents. But all you've got are two dollar bills. So we're going to set it up. Again, we've got we're paying more than we actually need, so we want some money back. Get some money back, you need to subtract. Our rhyme continues to work. So we take the $2 that we spent, that we overspent, we line it up with our $1.25, decimals line up, ones and tens. This looks like another candidate for the box trick. So box around the 20, make it a 19. The zero becomes a 10. Whoops. 10 minus 5, 9, 8, 7. Drop the decimal, 1 minus 1, there it is. 125 plus another 75 cents will give you $2. Okay, one more example for you. You go to the store and you buy something for $3.38. Most people don't have exact change. Most people aren't carrying around coins and have exactly $3.38. But you do have a $5 bill with good old Abe Lincoln on it. So one more time, we're going to set up our $5. Looks like this, $5. The decimal showing the difference between dollars and cents. Once again, our box trick works. So box it up. So we think of 50, 5.0 5 as 50. 
So we're taking one away from that. What's one less than 50? That's right, it's 49. The zero becomes a 10. 10 minus 8, 9 minus 3, decimal, decimal. And we do have a dollar to subtract. 4 minus 3, 1. One dollar and 62 cents is what you will get back. Be happy making change. It's always good to know how much money you're expected to get back so that you get your full amount.